to make sure that this does not, this conflict does not travel into America and tear apart another community. All right, Asalan like Iftikhar, you yeah. wanted to say something. Well, again, getting, getting back to my central point, I think that we as Muslims are failing in the sense that, that we are not, our, our selective outrage, again, like you mentioned, the Danish cartoon controversy. You know, we had fire bombings and riots in Beirut, Islamabad, and Kuala Lumpur. Where are those same... Where are those same protests? Where are the, where are the, where are the chanting Muslims saying no to sectarian violence that's, in Iraq? That's my point exactly. Ex well, yes. and that's, again, as someone who has dedicated his life not only to combating extremism but to also combating Islamophobia because we have to understand that when people in the West, when non-Muslims view and, and see our selective outrage, they are less likely to show any sort of sympathy when we do need the, the moral outrage, when we do need the all consensus right. of the global community okay, on our side. All right, there's a lady in the sixth, seventh row. You've had your hand up for a while. Uh, to, the, uh, to the side that says Arabs are doing, um, Muslims are doing enough for this, define enough. What to you is enough to stop this? If we hear different sides. We hear you saying there's a lot and him saying a little, but numbers don't matter. It's a problem and we need to face it, whether it's a tiny problem or it's a big problem. So what do you think, what, what, what do you think that we're doing that's actually enough to prevent well, it? I just want to reiterate one last time. I never said we're doing enough. I think until it's solved, we haven't done enough because I as a Muslim, it's my responsibility to completely eradicate it. Let's be honest, there's a huge conspiracy mindset going up and down the Arab Muslim street that believes that somehow Jews and the CIA were behind 9-11 and 7-7 and Muslims had nothing to do with it. We've got to get beyond this sort of... That's a, and that's conspiracy, denial, that's a good point. But, but that, that's widespread. But what is, that, widespread. No, but what is that conspiracy Mossad's point? Mossad's responsible. 3,000 Jews didn't turn up. We've got to accept responsibility for where we are collectively as a community. And once we've done that, and hopefully tonight's motion will be passed, because that, that, that admits that we've got a problem, then we can start talking about what to do about it. Okay. Gentleman in the third row, we'll take a question from you, please. Mrs. Khan, you said earlier that um, we need the average Muslim population. They need to step up to help combat extremism. Well, what can the average Muslim person do to help combat this? I have a five-point point strategy. We Muslims take pride in our five pillars. We love our five pillars, and we do them really well. But we also have another dimension which is how to take care of our fellow citizens. And what is it that we need to do? I have a five-part plan. We need to cultivate new leaders, new leaders who will instill hope and inspire others. You have to befriend the West, my friends. The West is no longer of the other. I am part of the West. There are 25 million Muslims living in the West. You have to empower women. They are the glue that hold the community together and the family together. And women have the most to gain by eradicating extre extremism. Wives, mothers, and sisters don't have to weep anymore in silence because they've lost their husbands, sons, and brothers. And you have to help Muslims who are working against extremism if you have resources. And I say, just give one dollar for every Muslim who's not an extremist. Okay. Give it to me or give it to any one of us, and you will see a change. Right, Fifth. Last Fifth, point. Last yes, point. and this okay. is the one that everybody can do. Mm -hmm. Reclaim the ummah for peace and justice and, repla and replace it by reporting criminal activity in your own community. Don't be afraid to do that. All right. Gentleman in the front row. You, sir. Uh, my question is from Mrs. Khan. Uh, you say that 90% of extremists are uh, ex that they're extremists because they're looking for political freedom, right? So Mr. Hussein said that uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, the center of the Islamic world, we have people selling magazines calling for the death of non-believers. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that there is a... Um, the truth of Islam has been hijacked by people who have a, a distorted uh, um, view of scripture. And I believe that, that is, uh, there is work to be done in that area. And so what would you do it. about that kind of literature being sold in Saudi Arabia? I think that we really need to take a serious look at that because we in the United States... What does States, that mean, take a serious look we at We have it. suffered Read from it? that in the United States because the verse says non-believers and then in parentheses it says Jews and but, Christians. But, 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 That's you, not you, a non-believer to me. And you say that every year millions of Muslims go to Hajj and we walk away silently. There's no protest against the fact that the Saudis have totally demolished our heritage in Mecca and Medina. There's no protest about the fact that they impose a certain sexual, sexual segregation in, in the Haram in Medina and in the Haram in Mecca. 
I feel collectively we're responsible for what's going on in our heartland from where we send out ambassadors on a yearly basis, unless we challenge it right there. Okay, well, lady in the second row, we'll take a question from you, please. Good evening. My question is to Mr. Arsalan. When the Danish government eventually met with the Muslims in Denmark, they chose only to meet with the modern Muslim. Isn't some of the extremism in Islam are the results of frustration born out of the West's desire to have a dialogue only on its own terms? Thank you. That's actually a very good question. On the day the Danish cartoon controversy broke, I personally met with both the Danish and Norwegian ambassadors to the United States to voice my opposition to it. And of course, during the time, the newspaper was hiding behind the free press argument, but we all learned later through the Guardian newspaper in the United Kingdom that they had turned down similar cartoons lampooning uh, the Prophet Jesus. And so this was an incendiary, insightful message that they were trying to send to the Muslim world. And unfortunately, some Muslims around the world took the bait hook, line, and sinker. And that's where we saw a firebombing of a Kentucky Fried Chicken in Beirut, a bombing of a Pizza Hut in Islamabad, Pakistan. And the, the difficulty that I had, you know, I, I go from CNN to BBC to Al Jazeera explaining these situations, and the first question that I get, and it's a question that I think all of you should think about, is that what about the virulently anti-Semitic cartoons that regularly appear in Muslim newspapers around the world? So if we are going to condemn racism, we should not only condemn Islamophobia, we have to condemn racism in all of its forms, especially within our own Muslim ummah, whether saying that Arabs are better than non-Arabs. We, we have to be consistent in our message because otherwise to the rest of the world, we're just seen as duplicitous Muslims who only cry foul when something goes wrong with us and not when our people do something wrong. All right, nice Masood. There are efforts. They are very substantial. They represent orthodox Islam. We need to get more media light onto them. Until the media is on them, the media light, we currently are going to have okay. people believing the other image in the media, hence your statistics. All right, we're going to take a question from the gentleman in the second row, please. Yes, uh, hi, my question goes to the opposition. Why don't the Muslims, like yourself, leading agencies that promote non-killing, go as far as maybe halfway around the world to Pakistan and stop, the, uh, stop like, schools there from teaching children at a young age that maybe if you um, uh, perform jihad, that will get, you uh, it will get you straight to heaven? Why don't you go as far as to halfway around the world to change it and not only stick to the West? I mean, it takes a lot of measures to stop extremism because you said yourself it's a very deep problem. Well, you can. I, I guess I'm headed to Pakistan next. Uh, thank you. My, my work is very extensive. I do go all over the place, but I will take your uh, proposition very seriously. Can I add to that as well? No, position. Well, yes, well, yes, and I would like to add to that that no, we are. We are. People are flying there. We are. We're getting rid of this literature. Those efforts that have been unknown are coming out now. And it's because of them that I'm saying we're not failing. And hopefully we will succeed maybe the next Doha debate. Asalaam istika. Moise talked about perception. We all know that perception is reality. When one, for, when one fourth of a nation thinks that you are too dangerous to live next door to, it is quite clear that we are not succeeding in getting our message across.